There you go. Praise God. <laughs> All right. Awesome. We just, I'm just excited and, and just, uh, you know, just rejoiceful of being able to share this message of patience that God put in my heart. Because patience is not something I, I naturally possess. It's not something that most of us possess naturally. But it's something that God gives us through our relationship with him. Amen. Because apart from Christ, I don't think, uh, apart from Christ, I don't think anyone could be patient. But it's only because of Christ in our life that we have the ability to persevere, to endure, to keep pressing forward despite of all the things that are happening in our lives. And to describe patience, it's the ability to keep enduring despite of the pain, hardship, and injustice. That's what patience is. The ability to keep enduring despite of the pain, hardship, and injustice. Secondly, it's the ability to keep your composure without losing your temper. Because a lot of times there's so many people that can test our, you know what I mean, our anger or test our patience. And sometimes we just want to explode. Or sometimes we're just like, I had enough. I just want to give up. Or I just want to, you know, just rage, you know, and just express rage and anger. There's a lot of people in that predicament at this moment. That there's certain people, whether it be your boss, your coworker, your wife or your husband or your children, that's testing your patience. Okay, thirdly, it's the ability to remain humble and calm and submissive to the will of God. The will of God is hard and difficult because it's sometimes we can't understand why God allows certain things in our life. And it's us who say, yes, God, even though I don't understand, I'm going to remain calm. I'm going to remain humble. I'm going to remain submissive to your will. Fourthly, it's the ability to keep a positive attitude and mindset despite of the many challenges. That's how you know you're walking in patience. When you are, you know, you have a positive attitude and mindset, even though the challenges around you are hard and difficult. Next, it's the ability to persevere and not give up on the ultimate vision or goal that God placed in your heart. Because I truly believe God has placed a vision and a goal in your heart that you hope to see eventually. And it, this is not something at the present moment, but it's something that you know that God placed in your heart that you've been praying for. Because I know you've been praying for your husband, for your wife, for your children, for your spouse, your coworkers, your neighbors to come to faith in Christ. And you're like, Lord, I'm going to hold on that it will eventually come to pass. Even though I don't see it at the moment, but I believe in the name of Jesus that my son, my daughter, my family will come to the Lord. Amen? And, sec and next is the ability to remain persistent in doing good while waiting for God's perfect timing. Because that's where most of us is at right now. Where, we're, where God is telling us to persevere in doing good in loving others and living out our purpose and mission. And we're just waiting for God's time. Because we know his time is perfect. Amen? God is never late, never early. He's always on time. Amen? Amen. That's who the God we love and worship and praise. Okay? So the journey towards God's destiny. I'm going to be talking about two important figures in scripture that exemplifies this aspect of patience. Okay? So the first one is David. David was a shepherd and was anointed to be the next king as a teenager. Just imagine this. This is, this is something like as a kid that... He got anointed for to become the next king. But did it happen right away? No. David himself had to go through a series of circumstances and challenges and a lot of patience in waiting for God's time for him to eventually achieve that goal that God placed in his heart, which is to become king. So what was the next step? It wasn't him becoming king, but becoming a servant under Saul. He ended up playing the harp and playing you know, and just serving under him to make sure that he's at ease, that Saul is well, and that he is receiving the presence of God. And thirdly, David encounters this huge <laughs> challenge in his life, which is to face Goliath. A lot of people were afraid and running away from Goliath, but God anointed David and appointed him to defeat Goliath, which he was eventually able to do. And you and I are able to do that. Whatever challenge you're facing today, whatever Goliath-sized problem or issue or circumstance, circumstance, know that in Jesus' name, you shall defeat and overcome that Goliath. Amen? And next is, King Saul promotes him to become commander of the army. Once he defeated Goliath, he's like, you know what? You need to be, in, you know, in power. So he became a successful warrior. 
he defeated so many um, uh, enemies that were against the people of God. And next thing you know, God sends an important person in, John, in his life named Jonathan to help him through the challenges and difficulty. And I'm here to let you know that God has placed brothers and sisters in the faith who will support you, who will pray for you, who will encourage you and lift you up in your most trying, difficult times. Amen? And praise God for the Jonathans in our life. Amen? You have those Jonathans and God placed those important people to help you navigate through the different seasons that you're facing in your life. And that's what God did with David. He gave him a Jonathan. And we have those Jonathans in our life. And next is that Saul became jealous and wanted to kill David because David was getting the attention of many people and he was getting the praise and Saul ended up, you know, building this hatred and resentment and jealousy towards David. So eventually he goes after him and wanting to kill him and wanting to destroy him. And some of you feel that, that way that there's people around you who are after you or mistreating you or trying to hurt you because of jealousy, because of, you know, um, they just feel that you're, you're, you're in the way of their goal or, or their dream in their life. There's many people who feel that way towards you. And that's the same way that David felt. That there was people that were trying to go against him and trying to destroy and harm him. But I tell you that if God is for you, who can be against you? Amen? No one could be against you if God is for you. Next is David goes into hiding from Saul because he's seeking to kill and take his life away. So he goes into hiding. He was in the desert place. None of us want to be in a desert place. None of us want to be away from where we feel we should be. And I'm here to let you know that that place that you're in is temporary. Even though you feel like, God, why am I in this place? I'm, I feel like I'm in a desert. I feel like I'm not going anywhere in my life. But I'm here to let you know that God uses that place of being in that desert to know who he is, to find your refreshment from him, to grow in your faith and know he is with you and you're not alone. Amen? God is with you in the desert and you're never alone. That he is with you. He's blessing you and preparing you so you can enter into your promised land. Amen? And next is this. David spares Saul's life. David had an opportunity to take his life. And, mo and some people said, why didn't you do it? You know, he tried to kill you, so it's kind of like you should take that vengeance and try to kill him. And a lot of times the enemy wants to test our patience and wanting us to retaliate. And wanting to do evil and wanting to harm those who have offended us, who've done us wrong. But God is saying, be patient, my child. Vengeance is mine. Vengeance is mine. And my prayer is that even though you're tempted to retaliate, even though there's people who are testing your patience, that you say, you know what? I know this is God's way of telling me to hold back and to, to train me to build self-control. Because self-control is, a, is a, a gift from God. Because I can't have self-control apart from God. Because it says in, the, in Galatians that part of the fruits of the Spirit is what? Self-control. And God's going to give you that ability as you trust in him, as you, as you follow him. He will build you the patience and the self-control in how to not retaliate or to take vengeance upon your own hands. Remember, God has you and whatever people try to do to harm or hurt you, God will deal with it, and God's saying, forgive them, for they not know what they do. Amen? Forgive them, for they know not what they do. And next is this. After about 15 years, about 15 years, David was finally the official king of Israel and Judah. So you see what I'm trying to say here? It, it, it wasn't automatic that he reached his goal or his destiny. It took a lot of patience, a lot of challenges, a lot of, of temptations, a lot of things that he had to deal with in order to reach that goal that God has placed in his heart. And I'm here to encourage you that God has given you a destiny. He has given you a dream. He has given you a vision. And I'm saying, let's be patient with the Lord. Let's wait upon the Lord and not rush into things because God doesn't want us to rush into things because his timing is always perfect. Okay? So number one, if you could read with me, God uses the challenges in your life to build patience within you. God uses the challenges in your life to build patience within you. Are there people around you challenging you? Yes, I believe so. Okay, look what it says here in James 1, 3 to 4. Be assured that the testing of your faith through experiences produces endurance, leading to spiritual maturity and inner peace. And let endurance have its perfect result and do a thorough work 
so that you may be perfect, completely developed in your faith, lacking in nothing. So we see here that through the scripture that God is using the challenges that we're facing right now to bring spiritual maturity, to really mature us, to mold us into the likeness of Christ. And, and the most important aspect of that is patience, which is hard for a lot of people. And a lot of people don't recognize this or realize this, but that the, the number one or first quality of love is what? Patience, right? Because look how, how is love described. Love is patient. So that's the first quality that really shows that a person has matured in their walk with God, is that they're able to be patient with other people, which is the aspect that God wants to build within us. Love is patient. So if you want to know your loving person, if you want to know you love God, love is patient. Like, ah, Lord, I have to be patient. I cannot just let uh, my, my, my temper or my anger get the best of me. I got to hold on. I got to be, I have to keep my composure. I cannot let the enemy steal what God is trying to build within me. It says in Hebrews 12 too, looking away from all that will distract us and focusing our eyes on Jesus who is the author and perfecter of faith, who for the joy of accomplishing the goal set before him endured the cross, disregarding the shame. So we see here in the first part of that verse, looking away from all that will distract us. The enemy will do whatever he can to distract us from the goal or from the dream that he has placed in our heart. Don't let the enemy distract you. He wants you and I to focus on the challenge. He wants us to be discouraged for us to remain in fear and worry, and for us to live in self-doubt. But that's not of God. That's why it says here, do not focus on the distractions. Keep your eyes focused on who? Jesus. And who is Jesus? The author and perfecter of our faith. Amen? So he's the author and perfecter of your life. So if you make him the author and perfecter of your life, you don't need to worry. You don't need to be afraid. You don't have to be stressed and lose your sleep and lose everything that, the, that God wants for you. It says here, for the joy of accomplishing the goal set before him endured the cross. We see here that Jesus endured the cross disregarding the shame. So number two, if you could read with me, your God-given vision gives you the ability to remain patient. Your God-given vision gives you the ability to remain patient. Patient. God has given you that dream, given you that vision, so you're going to keep pressing on despite of the challenges. Because that's exactly what Jesus did. When they were beating him up, when they were mocking him, when they were crucifying him on the cross, he endured it because he was focused on what? The goal. And what was the goal? To reconcile humanity back to God. Amen? So he endured. So all, some of us here, you're going to go through some things where you just need to endure and press forward. Even though you feel like people are attacking you, people are hurting you and doing you wrong, God is saying keep enduring, keep enduring because through all the, the endurance that you're, you're going through or building upon, it's going to be used for a greater glory. Amen? God's going to use everything that you've gone through, the injustice, the pain, the hurt, the sicknesses, everything that you've gone through for a greater purpose, just like Jesus went through. It says in Romans 8, 24 to 25, For in this hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what, is, for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. So we see here that's what hope is described in Scripture. It's something that we presently do not have, but we hope for eventually it will come to pass. Amen? So that's what hope is. And that's what keeps us going and not wanting to give up. Because there are times where you feel like giving up, you feel like throwing the towel, and you feel like, you know what, I'm going to raise the red, white flag and just give up. But no, God is saying, keep pressing forward. Keep pressing forward, and eventually, in my perfect timing, you shall see that dream, that vision come to pass. Amen? And it says here in Ecclesiastes 7, 8, if you could read with me, better is the end of a thing than its... Beginning. Better is the end of a thing than its beginning. A lot of us don't, you know, we're so focused so much in the beginning of things, but the truth is God knows the end of the story. Amen? And since he knows the end of the story, it's going to be better than the beginning. 
So even though the beginning road is hard, difficult, you feel like, you know, it's, it's, it's the tough season to be in, but I want you to focus on the end goal. Focus on the outcome of all the hard work, the sweat, the tears, everything that you've gone through, that what it will come uh, to fruition to, that it will turn into as you persevere. It says in Habakkuk 2, 3, for still the vision awaits its what? Appointed time. See, there's the vision that God put in your heart, in your spirit to, to believe for, in his appointed time it shall come. It hastens to the end. It will not lie. If it seems slow, which a lot of us feel it's slow, wait for it, it will surely come. Amen? It will not delay. So God's vision that he has placed upon you, your life, your ministry, your, your career, whatever that may be, it shall come to pass. It will come to pass in his appointed time. So number three, if you could read with me. God wants you to keep a positive attitude and mindset while waiting for God's perfect timing. Once again, God wants you to keep a positive attitude and mindset while waiting for God's appointed time. In Galatians 5.22, but the fruit of the Spirit, the result of his presence with us is love, unselfish concern for others, joy, and inner peace. Now look at this. Patience. What is it? Not the ability to wait, but how we act while waiting. So a lot of people think patience is just sitting there doing nothing. That's not what scripture is saying. You know what, what patience is, is you're actively doing something while waiting. It's not like you're just sitting there doing nothing, but you're actively praising God. You're actively worshiping God. You're actively keeping a positive attitude and mindset and just doing the work of God and planting seeds, 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 planting, investing, and planting, investing. That's what God wants you to do while you wait for the appointed time. Amen? So it says in Galatians 6, 9, let us not grow weary of doing good, for in due season we will reap what if we do not. So if you don't give up, you're going to reap all the things you've sown. Amen? And right now we're sowing into this city, this small little town called Eagle Rock. And I know in due season, God's going to really touch many lives in this city, that they will grow in their faith and walk with Jesus Christ. And what we're doing right now is just planting seeds, investing, investing, praying for people, loving people. And, you know, God's doing great and amazing things. I want to share to you something pretty crazy. We just did outreach, you know, uh, last week. And this is what astonishing to me, okay? While, while we were walking to the park here, um, as I was walking out, me, uh, three of us, me, my wife, and Dora, we're, we're walking out, uh, away from the park. Next thing you know, I see this guy with a, a Lakers beanie, a beanie with, that says Lakers, and he's walking his dog. So as I approached him, I was like, hey, I'm a Laker fan too. That's cool that you have that Laker, you know, that Laker beanie of yours. And as we were conversating, we started to talk. And the next thing you know, I asked him, what high school did you go to? He went to John Marshall. That's the same high school I went to. I said, by the way, where did you live? Oh, I lived in Atwater. I was like, wait a minute. I grew up in Atwater too. Here's another thing. What street did you live in? He lived in La Clean, And I lived in La Clean. How can, you, how can you explain that, right? <laughs> That's pretty crazy. And um, next thing you know, this is what's even more crazier. Um, he looked at my name. He, I gave him my card. He's like, wait a minute. The name of my dog is Geronimo. <laughs> how can you explain that, right? That's, that's the work of God right there. You know, so it's like, wow, that's like, that's not coincidence. You know what I mean? Like God appointed us to meet that person at the right perfect time so then he can encounter the love of God and eventually know who Jesus is. Amen? And that's the work of God. And we're going to continually plan. I'm not saying this person says he's a Christian, he believes. But I truly believe that encounter I had with him, that's an opportunity where friendship will be built. And in God's perfect timing, that person will also come to faith. Amen? That's what we claim in Jesus' name. Amen? So that's why it's so important to, to stop judging people right where they are. Because a lot of times we're like, oh, no, this person is not a Christian, so forget it. I'm not going to pray for this person. I'm not going to talk to this person. Are you crazy? God didn't do that with you. He was patient with you, and he was waiting for you to come to faith. So why are you not praying and loving those who don't know the Lord yet? Amen? Amen. We got to pray and love those people who don't know the Lord because in due season, 
as we invest and plant the seed of God, in God's perfect timing, they will come to faith. Amen? And my mom did that. I'm a testament of that because I was a hard-headed kid, rebellious, disrespectful in every way, capacity, and I was shipped to the Philippines because I was a rebellious kid, okay? And so I know, I know how it is, but my mom kept praying for me. She never gave up praying for me. That's why I know my mom was patient with me, and in due season, I came to the Lord. Amen? Amen. So you, can, you should never give up. You should never give up. You should just remain persistent in faith that whatever you're praying for in God's perfect timing, it shall come to pass. Okay? So number four, the last point, or last two points, is this. If you can read with me, God is the only source who can renew your strength. God is the only source who can renew your strength. It says in Isaiah 40, 31, but they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. There's some of you, you feel like, man, I, I don't have strength. I feel weak. I feel like I'm losing strength. I'm losing the ability to keep pressing forward. I'm here to let you know as you come to the Lord, you will find strength. Amen? Because Jesus is the only source that can give you that strength. You cannot buy it. You cannot possess it by the world standards. You can only receive it by faith in Jesus Christ. Amen? So I want to encourage you, come to God. You will be renewed. You will have the perseverance, the strength to keep, pressing, to keep pressing forward and to not give up. For they shall mount up with wings like eagles. Just like us, we're here in Eagle Rock, right? We're going to mount up like wings like eagles. You know, they shall run and not be weary. We're going to keep running. We're going to keep running until that time comes. Into, and this, what I love, in Psalms 41, I waited patiently for the Lord he inclined to me and heard my cry. God is collecting every tear in your eye, and he's keeping it in a bottle. He sees your pain. He sees your hurt. He sees everything that you've gone through, and he's saying, my child, trust in me. My child, I have seen your tears. I have seen and heard your mourning and your cry, every cry. God sees you, and he's there for you. So I want you to know that God is your strength. God is your strength. God is your strength. And you will find it as you humble yourself before him. So, God, I pray that you renew the strength of my brothers and sisters right now, Lord. Because I know there's some right now who are tired, who are weary, who are just feel like wanting to give up. Right now, Lord, renew their strength in Jesus' name. I pray, Holy Spirit, that your presence of peace, of, of overflowing joy and strength shall come upon them right now in Jesus' name. And last but not least, the challenges in your life is a sign that your harvest of blessing is coming. Amen? The challenges in your life is a sign that your harvest of blessings is coming. How do I know this? Look what it says in James 5. So wait patiently, brothers and sisters, until the coming of the Lord. The farmer waits expectantly for the precious harvest. You see a farmer? He's waiting for the harvest. How does he know the harvest is coming? Look. From the land, being patient about it until it receives what? early and late rains. So once he sees the rains coming, he's like, oh wait, harvest is coming, harvest is coming. So same thing, when challenges are coming your way, guess what? The harvest is coming, the harvest is coming, amen? So be prepared. Even though you're facing many challenges at this moment, in this season of your life, be prepared for the overwhelming blessings that's coming your way. It says in verse 8, you too be patient, strengthen your hearts, keep them energized and firmly committed to God. It says here in Lamentations 3.25, the Lord is good to those who what? Wait confidently for him. Amen? Are you ready to receive God's goodness? Are you ready to receive and experience God's faithfulness and goodness in your life? What do you need to do? Wait upon the Lord. It says in James 5.11, you know we call those blessed, happy, spiritually prospered, favored by God who were steadfast and endured difficult circumstances. Church, the most respected people is not those who had success, millions of dollars, have everything that they wanted. Those are not the most blessed people. The most blessed people are those who have gone through so much sicknesses, hardships, trials, and circumstance in their life, and yet they're here today. Amen? And that represents you and I. There's many of you guys who have gone through so many circumstances, difficult circumstances, yet you are blessed. Amen? 
yet you are favored, yet you are prosperous, yet you remain steadfast. You have heard of the patient endurance of Job, and you have seen the Lord's outcome, how he richly blessed Job. Many, the last story I want to end with is Job. And a lot of us knew this story, but I want to recap it with you. Remember this, Job lost all of his children and his wealth in a single day. In a single day, he lost all his children and all his wealth. Just imagine that. That's very terrible because he was the richest man in that town that he lived in. And that very day, he lost everything. His kids, his wealth, everything. And secondly, he then was covered in painful sores. That's how terrible his suffering was. He was from head to toe, was experiencing intense pain and agony from all the sores that he was experiencing. And thirdly, his wife even offered him no support. She encouraged him to give up and curse God and die. Isn't that crazy? Like his own wife, the one that he would, you would think that would be there for him and, to, and support him, wasn't there at all. It wasn't there. She said, won't you curse God? Won't you turn your back on God? And there's a lot of people who are like that to us. They're like, why do you still believe in God? Why still praise God? Look at what happened to you. Look at the circumstances that you've gone through. But I tell you, when you remain with him, you shall see the blessing of God just like Job was. Amen? He never gave up. He kept persevering. And next is this. When Job's three friends came to comfort him, they couldn't even recognize him from the distance because he was in so much pain and agony that they couldn't even recognize him. That's how much suffering and pain that Job was going through. And there's a reason why God allowed Job to be in Scripture, because none of us could ever complain and say that, you know, God doesn't understand me. Look at Job. He experienced it. He experienced it to, uh, you know, a hundredfold compared to what most people experience in this life. And it says, adding to Job's pain, his friends falsely accused him of wrongdoing and blamed his troubles on his unrepentant heart, though uh, through it all, Job patiently endured. Here's the key thing I want to share, because a lot of people mistake in this. There's a lot of people who have this wrong mentality, thinking that the reason why I'm sick, the reason why my life is a mess, because I've done something wrong. God is punishing me. He's, you know, he's, he's, he's trying to correct me because I'm such a bad person. That's why all of this happened. That's exactly what his friends were telling him. They were telling, hey, Job, you did something wrong, brother. That's why you're suffering right now. That's why you lost everything. You've done some evil things. And Job's like, I didn't do anything. I didn't do anything deserving of this. Don't listen to that voice telling you that you are suffering because you are evil, because you are a bad person. That's of the devil. That's not of God. Amen? That's never of God. That's never of God. God restored to Job twice as much he has he has had before. Amen? Everything that was lost, God was able to restore it. So whatever you were, that was taken from you, whatever is lost, in Jesus' name, it shall return. Amen? God blessed the latter years of his life more than he did in the beginning. Remember what I said in the, in the earlier passage? You know, some of us were so focused on the beginning of the journey, but it's actually the end. That's what's most important. And that's exactly what happened to Job. He remained steadfast. He didn't give up. He kept pressing forward. And in due season, he got twice back everything that was taken. And his life was blessed even greater the latter years of his life. Amen? So remember, church, God uses the challenges in your life to build patience within you. That's why he, he's allowing this to happen in your life. Secondly, your God-given vision, whatever he's put in your heart, will give you the ability to be patient to endure, to not give up, just like Jesus. He didn't give up because he knew for a fact as he, as he goes through this season of injustice and pain, betrayal, hurt, being be beaten and whipped and crucified, the cross will lead to what? The salvation of many people. So that's the same thing. Whatever vision that God put in your heart, in your mind, it shall come to pass. Keep enduring, keep persevering, because in God's timing, you shall see it. Thirdly, God wants you to keep a positive attitude and a positive mindset while waiting for God's timing. So keep planting seeds. Keep doing good. Keep being, you know, have a, the right mindset, the right attitude. And in God's perfect timing, you'll, you will see the reward of your faith. 
Number four, God is the only source who can renew your strength. Maybe some of you are like, hey, pastor, I feel weak. I feel like giving up. I'm here to let you know. Come to Jesus and you will see the renewed strength. Amen? You will experience the renewed strength. And last but not least, the challenges in your life is a sign that your harvest of blessing is coming. Amen? The challenges in your life is a sign that your harvest of blessing is coming. God's going to bless you. The blessing is going to be greater than the pain. Amen? Greater than all that you've gone through. You're going to experience that and know that. Amen? So if you're blessed like I am, can we close our eyes and bow our heads as we close in prayer for this part? God, I just want to thank you for the encouragement and just teaching us and showing us the meaning of patience through two important figures in the scripture in David and Job and in Jesus. So God, I want to thank you and praise you for just reminding us to remain steadfast, to keep enduring, to not give up, knowing that in your perfect time, we shall see the harvest, that we shall see the reward, that we shall see the vision, the dream accomplished in our lives. So thank you, Jesus, that we do have a destiny. We do have a purpose. And as we trust in you, as we go through the different challenges and not give up, we shall see our attitude transform, our mindset transform, and knowing that when we do get there, we're ready and prepared for the long haul. Lord, we're not here for the short term. We're here for the long haul. And Lord, I know that the vision that you have for us is, is for the long haul. So Jesus, give us the strength. Give us the perseverance. Give us the patience, O oh Lord. We cannot be patient apart from you. We need you, Holy Spirit. Fill us right now with immense patience towards you, towards other people, towards the dream and vision that you have placed in our lives. For we know, God, that you are the God who brings great things. And we trust in you that you will do great things. Bless us, O oh Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. is found in 2nd Second Corinthians chapter 8 starting at verse 1 and now brothers and sisters we want you to know about the grace that God has given the Macedonian churches in the midst of a very severe trial their overflowing joy and their extreme poverty well up in rich generosity for I testify that they gave as much as they were able and even beyond their ability entirely on their own. They urgently pleaded with us for the privilege of sharing in this service to the Lord's people. The Macedonian church, although most of its members were, were poor and in poverty, they, they gave with extreme generosity and with great joy. And may, may they be an example to us, even nowadays when we're facing so many challenges in our present lives. Also, I would like to say that uh, as we merge with Eagle Rock Covenant Church, uh, digital giving is made more easier because we're We've been taught to give through Zelle or Venmo, uh, which I've heard are, are easier ways of, of giving to the church. And also we have our offering box uh, at the back where, where anytime you, you, you feel like wanting to drop your offering, it's over there. Let's have a word of prayer.
Yes, Lord, even especially nowadays with the pandemic and the many challenges of our contemporary lives, we, we need a lot of patience. But may this not discourage us to continue contributing for your kingdom, for the sharing of the gospel, for the establishing of churches and Christian work. Lord, thank you for this opportunity to be, to be part of your ministry. Bless the offerings that are being given. Bless those wonderful and loving hearts that, that, that continue to give for your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen.